hello and welcome guys so in this tutorial we are going to learn how to model a toaster so let's get started so we start with a cube scale it adjust it a little bit and make sure it is on the top of the grid extrude this part out and scale it as well select these edges and bevel them a sufficient amount of segments select this edge and bevel this too Now select these faces and delete them. And let's add an edge in the center on either side. Now delete these faces and keep only one quadrant. We can add a few more edges here and few more horizontally. And now we can set the flow of these edges. So now I'll go ahead and mirror this over to the other side. So now I'll adjust the flow of these edges. I'll go into the front view and then I'll create a cube so that we can create a hole inside this. Move it up a little bit. And adjust the scale. Before we do any changes to the cube, I'll go ahead and add a few more edges on the side. We'll apply a bevel to the cube. And then select the surface on the back and the cube and apply a hole punch boolean. And then delete history to get rid of the shape. Let's fix the topology issues that we created due to boolean. Connect these vertices together and these. And now delete these edges. Now we connect this vertex to this. And then we do the same thing here. Connect the last vertex to this vertex and this to this one and delete these edges and now connect the center vertex to this point and now we adjust the flow a little bit we do have an end gone in between but we will fix that in a bit do the same thing on the top Check whether we have any obsolete vertices by pressing 3. Now we will be fixing the end gone part. We will redirect the flow of edges in a U form so that it doesn't flow throughout the object.
I'll apply a clay material to it now. And I'll check whether we have any shading issues. So now I'll select these edges and then extrude them inwards. Select these edges and bridge them. Bridge these as well. Now add an edge in the middle. Fix this part. Let's delete these instead. I'll go into modeling toolkit now and Change the selection constraint to angle and set it to about 19 degrees. Turn off constraint and select the inner part. Now let's convert it to edges and bevel it. So we do see some issue with the beveling, so we might have to delete some edges for a better bevel. So let's go ahead and undo this and let's delete these edges. And let's delete these two. So let's go ahead and turn on our selection constraint and reselect these spaces, convert them to edges and bevel them. And now we can bevel it with a larger amount. Let's push it back a little bit. So select the spaces again and then turn off selection constraint and give it one more bevel. But this time we won't be pushing it behind. We will just keep it to the same plane. So I'll just fix this by adding a straight cut instead of fixing the vertex and then delete the edge that is not straight. Now I'll add edges on either side and then move them apart by holding control and shift. And I'll connect these two vertices by multi-cut because connect tool isn't working that well and connect this to make a quad do this on this side as well and and let's do the same thing here I'll add an edge here in the middle and I'll also bevel it for a better support and then we'll add a few more edges with edge flow. Apply edge flow. Select these edges and bevel them too. We do see some minor pinching, but we can fix that easily.
So I'll select these biases and average them. So that decreased the pinching a little bit. What we can do more is use the sculpt tool and hold shift. Sorry. Hold shift and just paint over that area. So it works similar to smooth tool in ZBrush. It has reduced the pinching a little bit, so we will add a little more strokes over it. And now there's no pinching, so we can do the same thing on the other side. So let's check again that whether we see any pinching. I think we need to add a few more brush strokes. So now we don't see any pinching at all. I'll move these edges down a little bit and then I'll evenize the flow using the edge flow. So now we'll be creating a hole inside this. So I'll just go ahead and select these faces and then extrude them once. Scale it a little bit. And then I'll delete these faces. We want a more rounder shape here. So what I'll do is move these edges up a little bit. I'll align my axis to this edge so that when I move it up, it will move in the same angle without changing the shape. We can also slide these vertices alternatively. We need a little more resolution here so that it becomes much more defined. So what I'll do is add edge exactly in the center and then I'll redirect the flow in the U shape just like we did previously. Shift these edges down so that it looks more like a U shape. And now apply edge flow on these. And now we will do the same thing on the top. Adjust the flow a little bit. Same thing here.
drag these edges more closer to this for a better edge hold. I'll simply make a cut here and delete the other edge instead of fixing each vertex and do the same thing here. Readjust the flow. Select these edges and extrude them inwards and apply a bevel on this one. Let's check whether we have any shading issues. I'll create a knob now. So for that I'll go into front view and then create a cylinder. Give it 24 subdivisions and then snap it to this point and then place it inside this surface and then we are going to apply a whole bunch boolean to it delete the history to get rid of the shape we need to fix the topology here so what I'll do is I'll merge the vertices that are closest and then later on work on the other areas. So I wanted to fix the topology here by keeping quad even though the triangle would have sufficed since it's a flat surface. Having a quad there would have given it a much better look than the triangle.
I'll apply a shiny material to check whether we have any dents. And we don't see any dents here. So now I'll apply the clay material back again. And then select these edge loop and then extrude them inwards. And then extrude them again and push them back and scale it. Go into face mode, select this face loop and convert it to edge and then bevel it. We need to push this edge down a little bit so that the bevel can work well. And then let's apply a bevel again. Let's fix the flow of this area by sliding this vertex back a little bit. Now the whole of this area is complete. The next step would be to creating the base for the knob. So before that we need to fill this hole. Select this edge loop, extrude it and then merge vertices to center. and add a small bevel to this edge loop and also add one, one edge loop in the middle for edge hold. So now I'll create a cylinder with 32 subdivisions. The reason I'm creating a, a cylinder with 32 subdivisions is because while creating a shape for the knob, we might encounter some amount of pinching in there. So a higher amount of subdivision will help us minimize the amount of pinching that we have. So that's why instead of just duplicating the base cylinder that we have inside the hole, it's better to have a cylinder with slightly higher subdivisions. You will be able to see that when I create the knob. So let's scale this down first and select the faces on the front. and then extrude it out and scale it one more time. Let's apply a clay material before we proceed further. So I'll select these two edge loops and bevel them add one segment and then add a few edge loops for hold. We don't need this back part so I'm going to delete it. So I'll add one more edge in the middle and select this vertex convert it to face and scale it. So now the base of our knob is complete. What we are going to do is we are going to use the same base and use it for the knob. So I'll select this vertex, convert it to face and then duplicate it. And now I'll extrude it out. and then adjust the shape. I'll add one more edge in the middle 
and what i'll do is i'll connect the edges linearly instead of merging everything inside a single point and delete the edges that are diagonal So now that I've worked on these parts, I'll just keep one quadrant and delete the rest. And then I would mirror it over to the other side so that I will have a semicircle and do the same thing for a car to have a complete circle. Select these faces and extrude them out and add one edge in the middle. And now I'll select these edges. So once I've selected all the edges, I'll go ahead and add a bevel with one subdivision. And then I'll connect these vertices together. And then when you press 3, you might notice something. Let me first add a bevel here before we go ahead and look at that so you might notice very small amount of pinching so this is what i was talking about when i was creating a cylinder with 32 subdivisions but right now this is fairly minimal if I would have used a cylinder with 24 subdivisions, then the amount of pinching would have increased. And this is the reason why I use a cylinder with higher subdivision. So now we have reduced the amount of pinching by adjusting these vertices a little bit. And now it's almost negligible. Adjust this vortex slightly to the back. And now we don't see any pinching. I'll delete these faces and mirror it to the bottom in Y axis. It's 0 0.01 threshold. Let's rotate it a little bit so that it looks much better. And our knob is complete. So now I'll be creating four buttons. So I'll just start from a cylinder with 12 subdivisions. Snap it to this point. and then duplicate it and now i'll combine all of them and then push them inside the surface 
scale it a little bit more and adjust the topology before we apply a boolean on this so that our job becomes much more easier for fixing the topology Once we have done this, I'll just apply a whole bunch boolean and then delete the history to get rid of the shape. So I'll fix the topology on this part. So I purposely chose a design where we have to create holes on a curved surface so that you guys can understand how to do that and also how to fix any dents in those areas. So after fixing the topology a little bit on these cylinders or holes, we might notice some pinching happening and some dents. And I'll also show you a way to fix them. Make sure that you hold control and shift while trying to move any vertex or edge so that it doesn't change the form while changing the vertex and edges. Again, merging the vertices that are closer to each other. And now here I will create a redirection of flow similar to the one that we created before. Because I didn't want it, the edges to disturb the hole that we created for the knob. So now you might notice some dent on this area. So what I'll do is I'll apply a shiny material to check that properly. And let's apply a dent checker material to see that more. So now you may notice disturbance of these lines. So when I try to rotate my camera, you might notice that the lines closer to the dent will bend more than usual. And it doesn't bend on this side as much as it bends here. What I'll do is I'll apply a Lambert material on it so that I can work on it. And if you see it from the top, you can also notice the bump happening there. The way we can fix is by using a method called shrink wrap. So for that, we need a base of this material where we don't have any dents or anything. So I already had copied the base of this when I was working on it. And we this can be really useful for applying shrink wrap because it will mimic the shape that we have and it will get rid of the shape while keeping all those details that we have on our shape.
I'll select the faces specifically where I have the pump and also select some faces nearby it. And then now I'll duplicate this face, hide the back part, and then unparent it by pressing Shift P. And now what I'll do is unhide my base, select this and select the base, and then go to Deform and click on Shrink Wrap and make sure it's to closest and then apply. So now you can see that it merged in that base. Now press 3 and check. We still have some issues and the reason is that we don't have enough geometry to support the shape. So what I'll do is I'll create some more resolution here so that it can mimic the shape on the back. So once we've added the resolution, we can reapply shrink wrap. And now check again. And now we don't see any pinching happening there. So let's apply a shiny material to check. And now it doesn't look like it was looking before with the dent. Let's apply a dent checker material and now it looks much better than before. I'll delete the faces on our original model and replace it with the one that we duplicated and fixed the dent. and merge all the vertices on it. So once I'm done connecting the part, I'll apply an edge flow to fix any sharp areas. So after that, I'll just apply a clay material and then fill this hole. And once the hole is filled, I'll bevel the edges. So once this is done, I'll use these faces and then duplicate them and use them to create the buttons.
I'll use my previous base model and unhide it and I'll mirror it to the other side for creating the other half of the toaster. So once this is done, I'll combine both the objects and merge the vertices together. And then I'll also use some redirection of edge flow technique to fix this. We don't have same number of edges on either side. So that's why I have to redirect the flow of edges in an L shape to the bottom and in a quarter triangle on the other side. So now we'll create the top part of the toaster. Select these edges and extrude them inwards. And snap them to this edge so that it's perfectly straight. Extrude it down. And then select these edges and bevel them. Now add a couple of edges here. And select these faces and duplicate them and keep only one quadrant of it because we are going to need only one and we are going to delete the rest and now close this object by extruding these and now delete these edges as well because we don't need it now apply a fill hole reverse normals and now connect these edges So once we have done that, we are going to add a cube and then we are going to bevel it. So this is basically the part from where the bread comes out. Apply a boolean to this and we can also edit it after applying a boolean. So I'll bevel this part, delete history and fix topology on this part. So we'll be using the same redirection technique of edges like we did before because we don't want on the edges to go all the way throughout the object. Now I mirrored it over to the X. Delete the extra faces. And now merge it back. And now connect the edges and now again mirror it to the other side and bevel this part and add a few edges in the middle and extrude it down and we can also bevel these edges bevel this too I'll extrude these edges further down and then close them finally and then fix the topology on one part and then mirror it over to the other side. This part is done now, so now we need to work on the base of the toaster. So select these edges and apply a fill hole and I'll go ahead and bevel this. And I'll connect these edges so I've done connecting the edges. It's okay to have a triangle on a flat surface because it will behave the same way as a quad and it will make no difference on the shading. I'll duplicate the faces on the base and then use it for creating the rubber base of the toaster.
I'll reuse these faces to create the base of the wire. I'll select these faces and then extrude them once inwards and then convert it to a cylinder for the wire. using Maya CV curve tool for creating the wire.
toaster is almost finished now but we need to add just one more thing and that is we need to add a few more edges here because when i apply subdivision it doesn't give enough roundness so i'll just add a few more edges here And now we can use the same technique for redirection of the edges. Our toaster is now complete. I hope you guys learned something. Thank you for watching and see you guys next time.